and we're live, Chris. Just talking on a topic here as we uh, go into <laughs> episode 36 of the, the Knock Off Podcast. It's a Saturday throwdown edition on the uh, another beautiful morning here in Brisbane, joined by our rep man, our, our guest today. Hey. But uh, we're talking about... Andy, Andy Dick, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough Speaking um, of weird blokes We're talking about Andy Dick <laughs> He's a, an absolute character man But apparently he had an encounter once With Uriah Faber In like the back halls of uh, Of <laughs> like, one of the UFC events. Really? Like, full, like came on to Faber Like oh. I see you there Uriah <laughs> Like, oh, like oh. Hey Andy <laughs> <laughs> Get your hands off me bro <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that would be just and, – and that's – that's uh, anyway, well, that's probably a deep, deep subject that we want, that we want to go down. But he, he, is a, he is somewhat of a fruity individual. Oh, you've got absolutely. To, you've absolutely got to give him that. He's um, the, uh, the anti-John Jones. Yeah, I think I think Rogan's mates with him, isn't he? Yeah, I believe or so. That they've hung out before. That would have, I think they yep. worked together on uh, news radio or something. They Was did, that, yeah. yeah, and they've done some drugs together, surely. Oh, oh absolutely, yeah, they would have. Absolutely, they would have. I find it like interesting that he always says that he hasn't done any like any blow or anything like Joe. that. But Joe, Joe, yeah, you know, like I mean, because you would think someone that would be willing to uh, experiment with marijuana and experience with psychedelics and experience with all these different things that he obviously likes to experiment with, why wouldn't he have tried blow? Or why wouldn't he have tried, you know, like, I mean, I'm not endorsing that in the slightest, ladies and gentlemen, but, but I'm just sort of saying... His life in the fast lane, you mm, know, yeah. yeah. And he worked in Hollywood, so surely he's mm, come across a lot exactly, of Exactly, yeah. He would be around it still to this day at these parties that he's going to and stuff. Absolutely, 100%. but I think... I think he Joe Rogan has even confessed before. He's like, I know it would be bad for me because me, I've, I talk enough as it is, let alone going to these parties and being around that. He's yeah. like, that could be a real slippery slope for me. Mm. So he m- might be able to re- to recognise it, sort of thing. So. Yeah, and everyone yeah. does turn into a dickhead when they take it. So yeah, that's like it. He just he's got the insight to know I don't want to be a fuckhead, so I'm that's not going to take it. T- turning up at a if you turn up to any sort of like house party or environment and people are there. Jawing off and stuff You can sort of generally tell It's like oh there's, These guys are on some sort of Fucking en- enhancement drug here, it, like. it gives itself away Straight away Doesn't sure. it You know I, I remember we were In Bali Last June And Me And my brother And his girlfriend Were just sitting around At a bar And uh, we were Quite literally Just there Had Literally had One drink And um, And this lady Had come up to us And sat down And she just wanted to chat And then Probably about like 15, 20 minutes into the conversation, she just pretty much says, can I ask you guys a question? Are you on drugs? Like, um, and we were just like, no, no, in fact, like we aren't on drugs. Like we're just, you know, like oh, literally just had one drink. Like, wow. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. But like, she was just this like old sort of weathered sort of barley hippie that, you know, like had this like. Oh, I f- even forget what it was. It was like some, ch- Corby oh, some ch- <laughs> like charcoal, like juice cleanse company or whatever that she was oh, just, yeah. you know, probably collecting Centrelink in Australia and living over there. And you know, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry to generalize on you like that, honey. You know, a, yeah. it probably, probably wasn't your deal at all. But you know, and there's my under the bus. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Uh, but that's that's oh, I completely understand that, but. She probably just wasn't used to people having a, a normal, somewhat intellectual conversation that you guys would have been sitting around having. You Maybe know, that's true too. These guys are talking too fast for me. Like, are yeah, you guys <laughs> on drugs? Like, yeah, she absolutely. Lives in Bali not. though, she yeah. probably speaks really she, slow. Oh, yeah. So anyone who talks normal pace, she thinks is on drugs. All about exactly. Cleansing yeah. and she was like oh, that. Yeah, like yeah. very yeah. much like Bond that. That, that sort of yeah, Bali. yeah. 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 That that stereotype, but but we were only just talking before when we went to Coffee Bris that if you were overseas and and anybody who's been in an overseas environment knows that it's far far easier to get drugs because people approach you and mm. offer you drugs. So it's not like an, an Australian environment is too much where you have to go seek it out. It's mm. it's an environment where if you're walking down the streets of, you know, Amsterdam is a bad example, but really any main... Vegas. Euro- oh. Yeah, European cities, you know, London, you know, all those places, you will absolutely have people approach you and offer you stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, like, you, you get ripped off a lot, but, you know, you also... <laughs> There's people out there that you can get it off if you really, really want it. But there's supply and demand over here. Like over there, it's probably in abundance. But over here, because it's so scarce and so expensive, no one's going to go out and mm. you know 
offload whatever they've got to some strangers. Like, lifter, get your lifter. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, holy <laughs> shit! Like. But but they do, man. Like they do. I can remember standing in like. In, in a line to get into a club and, and people would just In London And people would just Walk up and down the line Of you know 50 people waiting to get into Like one of the big fancy clubs Over there And just like Pills Pills governor You want pills Pills c- Pills Anybody want pills Like pills governor Like just Like spruiking As they're sort of You know Walking down the Selling, pr- selling pills Better than copies of the big issue I guess <laughs> 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 Big issue <laughs> Uh, Big issue. They're out there grinding. Like, yeah. Shout out. <laughs> Absolutely. But look, we're, we're on the morning of, um, of was it last week that we yeah. had uh, 214 now? One, one week removed. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that was a good card. That card definitely delivered. You know, it was spruit to be the biggest card of the year. Mm. And, and it probably was. You'd have you'd have to say that you yeah. know in terms of As one star fight, power. I think we call all could have done without, but other than that, precisely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th- I think, and that's been the criticism. The right from the start of that card was decent. Like the fight of the night was on the prelims. Brian Ortega, Mo- Moicano, like and an absolute barn burner. And there's some good fights on that card. So for those boys to take out the fifty grand for that, that that was a barn burner. Ricardo Lamas putting away Jason Knight. Lamas is, is just a straight monster, man. And he's Jason Knight thrown into the lines then. Way exactly, too yeah. Too, yeah. Too, yeah. Much too, yeah. Much too, soon, too much man. too soon. You said it, Bruce. Let, let's see. Let's see if we have a superstar. Let's yeah. Do, no, we yeah, don't. No, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, for, <man. laughs> Back to fight past yeah. champ. That's it. Straight up, man. He'll have to. He has to re- really reset and go again. There, they have to throw him some sort of like marketable name. They're talking about like breeding other superstars. That I can. What was the Polish dude that knocked out Jimmy Manuel? Oh, oh the, the, I, I forget his yeah. name, but yeah, he, 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 we have no s- time. Is his yeah, name. Ozdemir. Yeah, Ozdemir. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. right on, Ozdemir. And and he's uh, I've just seen it during the week that he's actually called out Alexander Guf- Gustafsson, Good. which is an outstanding fight. You oh. know, if that that fight can materialise, that is a legit number one contender fight. Would much I would much prefer to see that fight too, yeah. than him rushing him into some sort of shot against Jones, where people are like. Fuck, he's the number one contender now and stuff. That would be way too much too soon for that guy. Mm. I'd it rather is. Gus just go straight to Jones, mm. to be honest. Mate, like, it's been too long. The rematches now for John at 205, man, do not get my dear card, I, I must admit. Like, and I'm mm. the hugest Rumble Johnson fan, and he came on MMA Hour this week, and he's like, look, if the price was right, I'd step in there against him. But I think Jones would be light work. Mm. Like, this dude is coming into his prime now, yeah. which is a scary thought considering he's undefeated. Like That re- loss on his record... Shouldn't count. Like he was no. beating the brakes off <laughs> Matt, poor old Matt <laughs> Hamill like, mm. in that fight on the way up. But, well, uh, for anybody that hasn't seen it, he just John Jones pretty much just dominates Matt Hamill and gets disqualified for doing twelve six elbows, which are just like vertical elbows to the bridge of his to, nose. Yeah, absolutely. Just cut it, cut him up sharp bad. Sharp bones straight on the face. Absolutely the, demolished him. The old adage in combat sports, <laughs> though, and Chael referenced this on his podcast, was. Uh, if two fighters meet and there's a significant age difference and the younger guy wins the first time, he wins again second time only quicker. Yeah. And that, that rang true like a motherfucker. Yeah. It really did. DC was doing better in that fight than he did in the first fight. It, oh, I, I had that going to 1-1. Really I Good thought shots. John yeah, yeah. was um, was super busy with his strikes, like diverse shit that he's throwing, like that that kick to the knee that he was throwing of DC, like just stops anyone in their tracks, yeah. like going, going to the body a lot, but... John won the first round, I thought, but DC had some very good moments for himself in that second round, and the third was busy as well, and just got caught like that was a straight baseball bat to the side of the head, <laughs> and, and <laughs> undeniable that that would have put anybody down, you know. Oh. So, so warranted. But yeah, he is an absolute star, and I think at this stage in his career, you know, I said it the other day, and I'm the world's biggest Anderson Silva mm-hmm. fan, but I think he is actually he is absolutely now undeniably. The greatest of all time that we've seen in an MMA cage, that's yeah. for sure. I think so, man. I think so. Look, he's beaten Daniel Cormier twice now. And the list of names previous to that are people that are going to be in the Hall of Fame mm. and shit like that. He just comes along you could, and finish a lot of them. It's just ridiculous. And when you look at the... The the name names of people that came through really in that era was when that two hundred five division and it's always sort of been that glamour division of of MMA. Like it's always Row. 
Murderers Row, exactly. You know, it's always been the the Chuck Liddells and the Tito's and the Vitors and the Randy Randys and the the guys that really the stalwarts that that really kicked the UFC off and had those wars. You know, with mm. each other. Rampage, because, Vandalay, yeah, yeah. yeah, Richard, Leoto. It's that was mm. the absolute it. blue ribbon. It, uh, yeah, and that's basically. Like, yeah, exactly. The rattling off there. Yeah, Un- unbelievable performance. The T Wood man, what. Uh, that's been, that's been 50 minutes of fighting for him. And I, there is plenty of people out there... And who, about eight strikes. ...who are appreciating the shit out of his skill set. And, hey, to stop 24 takedowns in a fight, if anyone does that, hey, hats off to you. From but Damian Meyer, yeah, too. Yeah. From, from Damian Meyer, of all people, that's... As, as, like, the martial art and defending one guy who's got a really, really superior skill set in one field and being able to defend that, th- that, part of, that part of the game is awesome, but... It's not fan friendly. We've li- quite literally had fifty minutes of fighting from him with very, very little action. He's mm. a freak. He's got unbelievable power, but just doesn't put it out there. He's content with just point fighting to victories at this point. And he's like, promote your fucking fighter on like the MMA hour and stuff. It's like Dana said uh, after the fight, and I don't always agree with Dana, but I had his back on this one. Yeah. He's like, look, it's all well and good to say that you won, but if you were in the uh, if you were in the audience. And you're flashing the iPhone torch on your phone during the fight because you're bored and you're booing. Mm. That's a problem. Exactly. And it, fuck, it, it, it downright is. Like if you want, if you want to come in and try to ask for pay per view points and renewals and things like that, it would be really, really hard to put T Wood solely as a headliner on a card these days. He potentially would have to go co-main in a title fight because if you're trying to market him as a champion, if you don't give him a favourable matchup with someone that's going to get after him. It can be a snoozer, like mm. absolute snoozer <coughs> alert. So that that becomes a problem for his marketing, and like yeah. he's so quick to get his back up about people having a dig at him. But it's always someone else's, f- problem, yeah. someone else's problem. He'll like never come the fans. The fans are essentially people that are paying his bills, man. So you need to have to listen intently sometimes to those people before they turn their back on you. Mm, exactly. Yeah, you're dead right in terms of you got to make a, a business case for yourself to make more money and all that sort of stuff. It, it's not about just for me, as a fan, defending the belt a long, a long amount of times, it's about, you know, providing entertaining fights that fans want to see. And that's why that Conor McGregor model is so successful. And that's why we're starting to see that transition of that new business model that, that they're starting to follow, that, that John Jones jumps on the mic and calls out Brock Lesnar. And, you know, because exactly like John Jones said, Conor McGregor has really shown combat athletes what is possible. You know, mm. and and the the Floyd Mayweather's have shown combat athletes what is possible. If you are a marketing genius and a promotion genius that can really, you know, build it up the right way and you know back it up at the right times and fight the right people at the peak of your career and and just really sell it, you know, because it. it is it's a business. And every champion at the moment in the UFC, there's no one with that sort of Aura. defensive style. Yeah. Like, but there's. The star power of wait, waiting for someone, some of these guys to break through, potentially, I know what you're saying, like not everyone's as famous as Conor McGregor, but each one of those champions, Stipe, John, fucking Conor McGregor, Max Holloway, Cody, mm. Demetrius, all those guys go in there and get after it. So those guys go in and bring the fight to people where yeah. not, that non-fan friendly shit can come back and bite. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you can't like do 38 feints and then one punch and then mm. do that for five rounds. Exactly, to yeah. watch it. Yeah, totally, totally. And, and and that's why I think that fans love the, or at least I do, you know, the Chris Cyborgs who, yeah. you know, like, let's face it, there's a dominant champion who comes out and tears through people. That's right. She's a Jose Aldo type, you know, character who, you know, is just, is not there to counter strike. They're there to take your fucking head mm. off, you know. It was, um, when she dropped Evanger off that first, like, exchange, was it just landed a short hook. I was like, oh, my, oh my God. Mm. Like, Pack it is, up. Uh, yeah, we're we're done here. Lamb in a lion's den. That's, that's right. But she toughed it out. Yeah, mm. She yeah. was resilient, Evanger. Like, didn't look, that, didn't look that flash. And the cyborg was clearly a class above on the feet. But didn't really lose too much star power in that. I think the UFC would absolutely have her back her after that. Her stock would have gone and, up uh, after that fight. That's right. She lost. And she actually is a 35er as well. So you could throw her in that division. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. There's fights there for her. She was, she was durable, man. Yeah. Oh, she was really, really d- durable. And, and that's probably the story of that, you know. I mean, she, yeah, I was, I was surprised like anybody was that she actually was able to go three rounds, you know. But, I mean, let's face it, those three rounds she was just taking shots mm. and, you know, 
defending herself at, at times, but she was getting overwhelmed and she, you know, ended up just getting demolished like ev- all of Chris Cyborg's mm. opponent, opponents do. I think there's potential for other l- women's fighters out there that saw that fight and went, She's not. Maybe that, it's not that bad. Yeah, like I might, exactly. te- I might test those waters now. Like Captain yeah. Gano seen that yeah. fight, starts talking about cyborg. Yeah, Holly Holm would step in there with her after seeing 100%. that. Like, yeah. yeah, these girls will back themselves in. So there's that is an exciting time. We finally got cyborg with the belt, and there's matches to be made for it. Exactly because people love a dominant champion because they love to see you know contenders rise up to mm. potentially dethrone that person, you know? And you only, I suppose, get that in combat sports by winning. So I can understand T. Wood's position in terms of, yeah, okay, he's not looking to take a risk to take an L, you know, because that's not good for business either, you know? But I think there's got to, yeah, as a fan, there's got to be a balance, you know? And I'm, I'm sure as a promoter, mm. there absolutely has to be a balance. But um, What's next for Jones? Where does he go? He obviously called out Brock. He's yeah. I think that's he's sort of like suspended or something. Like, oh, well, Brock's not in the Usada testing pill, so he has to have at least six months before he's ready. Right, and then he'd have to start training and everything. Yeah, so it'd probably be twelve months. And like. Jones would have to bulk up a bit as well. Mm. Mm. Get back on them gut supplements. What? What? Like, what, what, uh, what <laughs> <laughs> oh, tainted dick pill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what would he? What, Busted again. What would yeah. he come into the ca- What would he come into the cage at? You reckon? Oh, in terms of weight, five-ish. I reckon. Yeah, really? yeah. I reckon he'd like, go that big. Kane. Like, you yeah. know, Kane's about 235-ish, but he's a bit sloppy rig. Yeah. Um, I reckon Jones could put on a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, like, 228, something like something that. Something like that. Maybe. I think yeah. that's what he walks around at, mm. so you can't yeah. imagine he'd need to... He wouldn't to... bother weight cutting. Yeah, he'd yeah, yeah. He wouldn't... He w- maybe he wouldn't bother weight gaining, but you never know, actually. Mm. Yeah. You know? I mean, if you're fighting Brock, yeah. maybe you need to. You know? he maybe he comes in two, big. 249. Like, yeah. Oh, shit. Look, yeah. at, oh. look at this motherfucker. Just subs yeah. his older brother. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that Jones Chandler? Because <laughs> he could. Yeah. He could. Oh, man. You know, if he's walking around at 226 and he, you know, committed to... Oh, he went through that period there where he was like... Powerlifting fast. Powerlifting and mm. stuff. But you can understand how that would be really only in certain elements beneficial to MMA. At the end of the day, you've also got to be limber. You've also got to be, you know, great cardio. You've also got to, you know, all these other different dynamics. So you can't just... You don't need calf muscles because he hasn't got them. No, no. He's getting behind fire without them. Legs are so long. It's just, he must be an absolute nightmare to fight. When he uh, stung DC with that high kick and chased him down with that sneaky little trip that he did in there. That was pretty cool. Yeah. He's just like... This guy is a freak. Like, yeah. that, just his ground and pound. Like, I love watching his ground and pound. I wish he would... Relentless. His striking is getting so much better, but I, part of me just wants to see me get him go back to that early days, John Jones, and just start throwing people with like heavy elbow beat downs and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. I lo- that ground and pound finish was awesome. Like, like Against like, Brandon Vera, was it, where he broke his orbital oh, bone? Oh, that was, yeah. One elbow and he just hurdles up. Yeah, Brandon Vera at the time was a killer. Like yeah. He was in that UFC heavyweight and light heavyweight. He would sort of alternate between the two. He was a murderer, man, and John just comes through and just like threw him around. Yeah. Like we, he's Michael Jordan of mixed martial mm. arts at this point. He really much. is, but just because he hasn't lost. Yeah, yeah. he like hasn't he, lost. No, no, that's that's what's so incredible, and and he hasn't lost to high, high, high caliber people. Mm. You know, I mean, some people have a, a real high sort of you know Khabib Nurmagomedov, but he hasn't quite fought the same amount of caliber in in that same amount of fights because a huge amount of you know John's total amount of fights have been in the UFC and, oh, and yeah. have been have been against ridiculous name people. And he fought Shogun at 23. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 No breaking in period. Oh, he fought the janitor, you know. Yeah, Matyshenko. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Here you go, Vladdy, like, oh. And that, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> that that was a quick rise to the title for him, yeah. you know, and, and everybody knew it. I remember the, the very first initiation fight that I had to John Jones was watching him be- beat Stefan Bonner. Oh. And, and, and then I, I remember thinking at that point, like, because you see, you'd seen Stefan Bonner at the time through the Tough Series and, you know, oh, like... Took, Stefan Bonner, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Took a couple soccer. of L's, yeah. but, you know, um, was a tough dude. Like, you know, no one had walked through him and John... Walked through him, yeah. you know, in that fight. So yeah, he did a bit more experimental stuff back then. Like he did a lot more spinning stuff and tried to do a bit more combinations. Whereas now he's a bit more cautious. But still, like mm. this, this he'll still uh, do shit no one else will do. This mm. journalist shit me in the press conference afterwards, man. Just like, do you know mixed martial arts? 
guy, like to <laughs> the question that he asks, he's like, "So, John, uh, when we looking about, when we looking at that belt with Anderson Silver, baby? Like, when, where is it? Like, he's like <laughs> five years ago. He's like, <laughs> he's, like, no, no, like, he's asking Jones that, and he's like, yeah. And Anderson's not on my radar. No, man. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're homies. Like, uh, he's like a legend. He's aging. Like, I'm. Coming into my prime, like we don't want none of that. Yeah, like, I exactly. don't want to lose to Anderson. He doesn't want to lose to me. Like yep. that sort of. He goes, let's stop, leave it at that. I'm like, man, of course they're not going to fucking fight each other. Yeah. Like, I bet you a bunch of other journos in the room are like, dumb. Oh. Well, some bloke from the Daily Mail. Or yeah, something yeah. Who's this? Hey? Hey? <laughs> Who's this? Hey? Send, in the, send in the groin strike, yeah, boys. So Floyd, when are you going to fight Roberto Duran? Fucking hell! Fifty-one and over. <laughs> <laughs> But we, we, we've been talking during the week that there's been a lot of – a lot of, I mean, any media hype around this Conor McGregor um, Mayweather fight is huge. But the M- story in the MMA forums this week anyway is that uh, – is definitely the boxing with um, with uh, Paulie. Paul Paulie. So, like, um, he is – oh, fucking – I need yeah. to Paul, – Paulie Malinaji is a, a two-weight world champion in his own right in boxing. Uh, McGregor has hired him – to come in for live sparring. So they've sparred twice now and it's blown up to the point where Paulie's like, nah, fuck those guys. I'm not going back. Like, I'm a, t- I'm a world champion myself. I came in to tune these guys up. I ain't here to be fucked with. Like, because it started off where Paulie first trained there. He did, I think, like, around six rounds or something like that. Worked with McGregor. And then he had to cover the uh, Garcia v. Broner fight for Showtime the following week. So he mm. sparred. Flew to New York, worked there for the week in the lead up, doing all the press, the media, does the commentary, flies back to Vegas. We're talking like a good four and a half, four hour flight. I think sort it's of thing. five and a half. Really? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Like a, a day's travel out there, basically. You get, get to the airport, get out there, land, and they're like, righto, tonight, 12 rounds. And he's like, oh, I haven't, I, I'm off the couch. Like I'm retired. Mm. I'm coming here to tune up. You just flying me all the way back. And now you're saying 12 to your boy who's in like peak shape. Yeah. Like, Okay, fuck it. Like, if you want to go 12 rounds, you go 12 rounds. And Paulie had come out and said in a couple of interviews, he's like, I've signed a non disclosure agreement, but I can be honest. Like, I, it wasn't oh my God power that I felt in there. He goes, I've sparred thousands of rounds with thousands of fighters. And he goes, I'm sorry if it's not what you want to hear, but he's not oh my God power. Sure, he hits hard and he gets your attention because he's a, like, mm. he's a, a, good, a good athlete, but I've felt oh my God power you could count on, on one hand. Mm. That mm. where he's like, you get hit and like, oh, I can't get hit with that again. Exactly. Like, and and Connor, Connor's camp is obviously trying to sell something that's upcoming, so it's in their interest to you know to boost their boys' stock. But you can definitely understand, you know, Paulie's viewpoint on, you know, it's about sort of his reputation mm. too, you know, because if the McGregor camp's posting photos of you know him on the ground with Connor standing above him, and he's like. That's a fucking push down, you know. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. you play the whole video sort of that's thing. That's right, because that's that's what he took <coughs> exception to. Someone from the McGregor camp put uh, put a photo of Paulie on his back, with as he's kind of standing over him, and with the caption that "Oh my god, power." Mm. It's like, hey, I w- don't fucking punk me like that. I'm a world champion in my own right. If you didn't get dropped, you'd be filthy that that went out there. Like, yeah, they're insinuating that he fucking dropped me, man. That didn't happen at all. And Just he's like, over. he goes, I dare you to play the the live footage. He goes, play the full twelve rounds unedited. He goes, they won't, and I fucking know the reason why. Like, yeah. I, I beat that ass. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. yeah. Like, exactly, exactly. So, that's awesome. Like, when have you ever been that captivated by what's going on inside a training camp? Like, Very much yeah. glued to it. And apparently, the twelve it. rounds were like. No holds barred, just yeah. going at it. People want to see the footage of that more than they want to watch the fucking yeah. Mayweather uh, McGregor fight. I would, yeah. honestly. I'd like oh, to, to see to that. Be able to buy, I'd pay per view those live rounds <laughs> in a heartbeat, man. I'd buy them. I, I promise you, after this fight, they will be available. Absolutely. Yeah. That, have you seen the amount of people standing around those yeah. rings for Connor fights with cameras? Well, there the, would absolutely be video yeah. footage of that. The that Showtime sparring. series as well. When they follow them through camp, so the cameras from there are going to be there as well. So heaps of you're right. Footage, you're so. right. There'll be heaps of footage. There'll be little snippets of the video mm. for the UFC like, like lead in and like jawing off at each other and everything. Like yeah. plenty of chat getting thrown and oh, like, like oh shit, this is heated. Ah. Yeah, poorly giving him like advice in between rounds yeah. and stuff, yeah. like yelling stuff at him. You know, I mean, and and you're talking about like poorly. Um, Malig- uh, Malignal- Malignaggi. Malignaggi. Yeah. Is that how you pronounce Malignaggi, his last name? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Wait, did you hear also in the world of boxing, but this is a bit more gossipy, about Amir Khan? 
Apparently, he's leaving his wife because she oh. wanted to fuck um, Anthony Joshua. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's like, it right. It all just happened overnight. Yeah. I, I was just reading yeah. it. Apparently, yeah, he just went on Twitter and just went on the Sprayed up. saying, oh, it's all over. Rah, rah, rah. You and a, you know, I, th- I knew you wanted to sleep with other guys. I didn't think it'd be from boxing. Then he tagged Anthony Joshua in it. And then he replied saying, no, man, I've never even met her. Anyway, I like BBWs. Like, <laughs> 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 Is that what he said? <laughs> and all these fat chicks are going, oh, fuck yeah, Anthony yeah. Joshua, I've got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> he loves that BB dub. Oh, yeah. That's so yeah. classic for him to post that. Oh, yeah. That's gangster. So he, he said he never met his wife, but I don't know. She looks like a pretty good sword anyway, but yeah. obviously not big enough for yeah. him. Anthony He's a heavyweight. He wants to scrap with heavyweights. Anthony yeah. Joshua would be hitting whatever well, he Paul, wanted. <laughs> Ma- Ma- Paulie has fought um, Amir Khan mm. and, lost, yeah. and lost to him, you yeah. know? I mean, and he, he's a... He's a, obviously a, a really, really respectable b- boxer in his own right. Mm. You know, ridiculous yeah. Wo- world, yeah, yeah wo- world champion, and you know all that sort of stuff. So, you know, it's that that interest in even seeing Connor fight a guy, a two-time world champion, one hundred and forty-seven pounder. Yeah. You know, because that that's cool in its own right. That's it. They could be angling towards a fight here. Be like, man, let's do a bit of a troll job here. We'd be able to box on our own too, maybe, man. Wow. Well, I'll, I'll make ten. You make ten. Yeah, right. yeah. Does Connor fight back in the UFC after after this? Uh, Dana said yes. He said that Connor said to him, "I want to come back in December," mm. but. Mate, if you made a hundred something million dollars, and you've got a baby at home, like you've like, been on the grind for free a few years now, fighting multiple times a year, like you don't have to do anything for anyone. He could mm. easily take twelve months off. Yeah, that's like, that's get fucked money. Yeah, mm. pretty much, isn't it? Yeah, that's from a kid from Ireland, one hundred twenty-five million. The checks are still coming in from all these endorsements and stuff. McGregor yeah. fast, and yeah. you know all the different shit that he's got taken off at the moment. That, that would be selling. For yeah, mega. And that, that's that's what's so crazy, though. You see those posts from you know that, that Floyd put out during the week, and you know, and he's he's talking the numbers of you know three hundred million for mm. for this fight as well. You you do, like that that's that is, and it's not a, like he said it. Sorry, pardon me. Where I was going with that is, he said you know it's not over four or five years. It's not a four or five year contract to get that money. It's thirty six minutes. You know, and that's all it is, you know. Mm. I mean, obviously, it's a lot of training and, and shit that goes into it behind the scenes. But really, that competition is just 36 minutes. And at the end of that 36 minutes, you've got $300 million. Boom. I'll get the shit kicked out of me for you know, oh. 300 million for 36 minutes. I'll do it all week and get the shit kicked out of me. Man, definitely. Most definitely. I guess last week, Sean was like, man, you pay me 30 grand. I'll get in there with Cody Garbrandt. Like, yeah. 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 Wild. Yeah. Man. yeah. yeah. Well, it yeah. last very long, but yeah. I'll get in there. Mate, dead set. You'd try and have, you, he would have had a crack. Yeah. He absolutely would have. Get in. He's like, I'll test my skills. And it was like, a standard banger as well. So he'd go <laughs> out on his fucking shield in there, man. Sean would. What, what would you, um, would you be able to last 12 rounds if you were gar- with someone if you were guaranteed to not um, be knocked out by them like and, and not submitted? It was just a slugfest and you were just had to endure the punishment? Oh, I don't even know, Even if you went to the body, you'd be down. Yeah. The legs yeah. get real tight real mm. quick. Like, and, it, and the, just think about the adrenaline, just the adrenaline dump after about two or three rounds. You'd just be rooted. Oh, you would. Because you've, you've done quite, um, quite a few sparring sessions down the, down the, down the coast. coast. Yeah, it's just... In like, boxing too. So yeah, so banging. I... I don't know. The thing is, because I'm not an endurance athlete by any means, is just I got so nervous about getting tired. That mm. was the thing that really yeah. sort of... Being really tight and stuff. Yeah, like. you'd get so tense and you just think, oh, I don't want to get too tired. Oh, I'm going to spew after this. They end up just making yourself tired by worrying about it and getting all worked up and stressed about it. Mm. Mm. So after a while, like the easiest thing to do is just be just to relax, take a few shots and not put your guard up and put your earmuffs on and tense up. Just yeah. a cop a few shots, that way you'd last around a bit better. And it, and it just it gives you such a respect for the cardio that the guys like Floyd Mayweather and, you know, guys with really good cardio have. Mm. Mate, he runs five or seven Ks apparently, but he does this shit at like two in the morning. Mm. And he runs his mile at like five minute pace or some bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Like a really, he really he's just an insane, insane puts on a up. pace that no one can beat. And you saw him in his last fight, pretty much every fight. When have you ever seen him you know, sucking in the big ones. Yeah. Ever. That, that, I think cardio can play a part in it. If yeah. it is, if it is going to go into the deeper rounds of this battle, I think, what, well, as you say, Floyd, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a massive if for, for both. If McGregor's to win, it has to be early. 
Yeah, yeah. So it would have to. His be power early. isn't going to get stronger as the fight goes. I on. think no. he could, he's just going to be that Robbie Lawler. That Robbie Lawler, Donald Cerrone. He's just going to try and charge him, cut him off, yeah. and just unload. Yep, I and think it, it just sort of has to be. I'd say. And Connor doesn't seem to be making any secret of it. No. You know, like I mean, yeah. Connor's been making posts during the week about you know, like I'm coming sprinting at you with bricks. Yeah. You know, be ready, <laughs> be ready, brittle hands. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> you know, so oh. it, it's you know he's he's not making any any secret of that that. Game plan, mm. and that's that's what suits him. You it's know? I don't think our asses will touch the seat no. until the end of the first round. No, like. yeah, and that's why that that fans will love him for this fight, win or lose, mm. is because he really even could get schooled. But people will just be like, "Ooh, you know, like I, I paid for that Floyd Mayweather Manny Pacquiao mm. fight, and I paid for the Floyd Mayweather, you know, um, Conor McGregor fight, and that one was way better than yeah, the other. Yeah, you know, was, way better." I was way more entertained. Yeah. Way more entertained, yeah. So, but but obviously, boxing purists and all, all like will just you know will poo poo that fight all they want. You boys going to Sexpo this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> That's on today. It in, is, yeah, in it Brizzy. Is. Yeah, it is at the uh, convention center in Brisbane. Have you ever been to that? I have. Yeah, yeah. When did you go? I've been. Uh, I've been. Oh, I'd be maybe like two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten. Like, I told a story on the podcast of how I'd uh, shit myself in Bali last week and I had a. <laughs> Almost shit myself at sex bar, which really? is probably like, oh, this guy's into scat, eh? Like, he's, <laughs> he's, come, he's come for a look. Oh, like, oh, you shit yourself oh, in public, right. you're fucking like, loser. Uh, you shit yourself at sex bar, you're just, yeah, that's freak. just what you're, you're into. Like, oh, shit, yeah, oh, respect, man. Yeah. So, uh, it's, um, <laughs> you're the scat man. Going into like the underground car park, I'd gone out and had a um, like, big night on the piss on, on the Friday night. This when uh, me and Mizzle were living together at Newstead. So yeah. So gone out and got. Real blind all you, Friday night. You never really got blind when you were living there. No, did you? no, rarely, <laughs> man, rarely. Had the odd beer. Like, <laughs> 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 I went to, um, born into the underground car park. I'm like, oh, I need to do a shit. Is there a toilet down here? There wasn't. Had to go up the elevator, like, <laughs> Basically sprinting to the toilet to sit down and straight leg it. Yeah. Like, real, real close call. Like, <laughs> straight leg it. Real close call, man. And um, go in. And it, it was okay. Like, in there, it's just sort of like a bunch of stalls where it's like, it's like the Ecker for adults where there's like, you know, the dildo shed and then like yeah. you, go, you go next door, there's a fucking little like ghost train where you go through and watch porn and like yeah. all, just all sorts of Ghost yeah. train. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. yeah. Have exit, you, exit to the right. Like. I, 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 won, I won a um, an amateur stripping contest there when, really? I, yeah, when <laughs> I was like um, when I was like 22 or 23 or something. Like uh, me and a bunch of buddies just went there and there was like – this, you could just pretty much go in for it. And I, I don't even think we had been drinking, but just being silly and, and that age and, you know, yeah. boy, boy, group boy dynamic or whatever, we were just fucking... Plunging V-neck. Like. <laughs> <laughs> With your bay hoodie. Uh, yeah. Bay hoodie uh, and just fucking plunging do, V-neck. Do, uh. Doing the splits and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Warming up in the back. Yeah. <laughs> that young Jamie Jury. Uh. <laughs> Oh, 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 would Kyle do well? In one oh, of those? Yeah, he would excel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep, excel. I, I think they actually in the, in the, within that they said that you have to. I mean, it's an amateur stripping contest, so like that. I think it was some sort of stipulation that you couldn't have, you couldn't be like obviously couldn't be a professional dancer yeah. of any description, but. Um, but yeah, we just got up on stage and like just fucking ran around and like got your smacked rock, each got your rock out. Sma- oh. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> smacked each other on the ass and like just fucking r- ran around to this stage. And then afterwards, they just pretty much like <laughs> like went out to the crowd with um you know like you, you cheer for the person that you want to win it oh, most. The, the clap o meter. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> clap o meter exactly. Uh, then I just got this got this show bag like with this like um. At the time, sort of what would have been a flashlight, I suppose. <laughs> but it was just a really poor excuse for one. Although <laughs> it was dope at the time. I definitely used it. <laughs> it got the job done. Fair enough. Uh, definitely got the job done. But um, a whole bunch of other shit that I just traded among my mates and, and all that sort of crap. But have you ever been? No. I, I'm sure I've told you blokes about this. There's a guy I went to uni with. We called him Creepy. Uh, we'll call him Tan. <laughs> Um, no, his name's Dan. Yeah. Um, he was just... His phone just, number is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was just the creepiest bloke you ever met. Just, you know, took photos up girl skirts during lectures. Was creepy around <laughs> patients. Was just... Oh. Ooh. One of those guys you're going to hear about on the news yeah. in a couple yeah. of years. Yeah. <laughs> he got his general... Regi- he didn't even get his general registration for years because he got notified by APRA, the regulation agency, within a month of working. 
Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Because they thought, Creepy Dan, where should he work? Oh, let's put him in a sexual health rotation. That won't turn out bad. Right. But, um, yeah, he was at Sexpo working for like at the Australian Sex Party stand or something. Right. And I think he posted a picture of it on Facebook and I said, you know, there's a reason why everyone calls you Creepy Dan. <laughs> and I think he deleted me after that <laughs> and just sent me this <laughs> message saying... I would appreciate you not writing abusive <laughs> messages on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, don't be a fucking creep and I'll stop writing it. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it, I love that. I love that getting to that stage because we were only just talking about it before down in the car park there that um, where, you, where you're prepared to leave someone that feedback. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're, you're prepared to. I was like, I ain't, I ain't friends with this guy. I don't yeah. like yeah. him. Call Someone's got to say it. Yeah. Call him out, man. I remember in one of the show bags that we got at, uh, at Sexpo had a um, – like, oh, we'll just get this one. It might have been like $25 or something that you bought. You get some Dommies lube. Like, and it had these... Uh, <laughs> Dommies, what are those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Threw them in the what's, bin. What's <laughs> <laughs> what am I, a sailor? Yeah. <laughs> what, what's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what, a dong? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, they had these... Uh, a gummy G-string in there. So it was like edible undies sort <laughs> yeah, of thing. Yeah. It was like, made it all gummy. And um, being, being Brisbane in like summertime, we're like... Like, yeah, fuck yeah, we'll get home, chuck on the uh, the edible undies for oh. sure. And then we'll, then we'll use the dildo as well. <laughs> like, fucking open the edible undies, man, and they just melted into a big ball. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just got like this plate of gummy that was just meant to be this banger. I'm like, ah, oh, I get fucked. <laughs> got this fruit roll up yeah. that was supposed to be. Yeah, about. exactly. Yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, buzzkill. Oh, abs- yeah, sold down the oh, river. No good, no oh. good. It's so funny, like, be, the dynamic of being in those sex shops, though, because you've always got those eccentric people that work there mm. and, you know, coming over and asking if he can give you a hand. But the more that you obviously... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it behind the curtain. Like. <laughs> <laughs> there would be some creeps Ooh, going into those. My Absolutely. brother's mate worked at a sex shop. Um, I won't say his name because this is quite incriminating. But he would just take heaps and heaps of shit from the sex shop. By the end of it... He had about four suitcases full of dildos, mm. magazines, DVDs, yeah. fucking costumes. Some really people are freaks. Plugs. Some just people are legit freaks. He didn't freaks. want to use. It. He didn't use any of it. Like he barely watched the porn. He was just like, "Fuck it, I'm just going to take a bunch." of Oh, shit. He, he was just, just took stealing it for the sake of stealing. Yeah. Really? So they lived at this tiny house at Clayfield, and the whole back room was just suitcases full of fucking sex paraphernalia. What? And just ov- eventually, obviously, lost his job. But he reckon he would have stolen about. 10 grand worth of just <laughs> sex shop <laughs> shit uh, but didn't use it at all or didn't eBay it was just like yeah I don't know I'm just gonna collecting you know, porn yeah. you should have got it on eBay uh, I suppose like seeing it go on the internet would obviously trigger people to come looking for it yeah it's yeah. like oh we know the serial numbers on this shit. yeah but I took some DVDs yeah. and they were pretty shit like right yeah it's funny um Probably the only stealing that I've ever done from a job as such would have been this bakery that I used to work at, which was at Marumba, which was at Marumba Downs, and um, and it was just a like a, a pie shop and stuff like that, and I just wouldn't put money through the till and mm. just a small you know, business, yeah, and you're ripping them off. Yeah, absolutely, that's exactly what I was doing. You know, the, the kids couldn't go to private school that year because you ripped them off. Yeah, all my mates would turn up on, on Saturdays and. Um, and I'd just put like six pies and, yeah. you know, I'm like, so like shit in a bag and just not charge them for it. Because at the end of the day, I remember that you used to throw shit loads of stuff out oh, anyhow. Yeah. Mm. You know, huge volumes of stuff. So Me and my mum, we used to go to bakeries on Sunday afternoons when they'd finish and they had all that leftover stuff. And we'd take it and deliver it to like less fortunate people. Yep. Mm. And I would probably take a few things as well because, you mm. know, I was less fortunate. Tax. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You tax. Know, you've got these poor people getting jam cream donuts and I'm getting shit on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got to get something for myself as well. <laughs> shit, yeah. But with, I remember that at Coles. Like, I'd ex- accidentally put something through and forget to swipe someone's card. Mm. Accidentally. I'd, 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 all accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like 200 bucks worth of groceries and I remember some bloke goes, Oh, I, I think I need to sign for that on my credit card. I went, Oh, no, no, not for this. He's like, You sure? Yeah, no, mate, it, it's gone through. And my till was out by like $300 that day, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just couldn't be bothered. I'm like, oh yeah. man, yeah, Wait, exactly. I'm not gonna be here forever. Yeah. It's Coles, he gives a shit. Yeah, yeah. human error, yeah. Like that's what, look, mate, I made a mistake. Yeah, I'll, I'll wear it like, exactly. And, and I, didn't, I didn't wear the cost of it, obviously. no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> not no. And especially at that age, you're not you're not thinking things through all the way, you know. So, you you know, you're prepared to sort of take those risks, and you don't have any money at those at that age anyway, or at least we didn't mm. when we when we sort of yeah, grew man. up. So, 
You know, if you had if you had five, ten, twenty bucks or something that was stashed in a tin or some coins that added up to that, you were, you know, oh shit, I'll save that for you know spending that on something that I need. You know, mm. a stick. Yeah, <laughs> God, but you halve sticks with people. Oh, I remember yeah. the uh, real early days. Yeah. That was it because you had f- such little money mm. that it was a case of man. You put in a fiver. You put in yes, a fiver. Yeah. You put it uh, like get people together with a stick, and we'll you know five people will have a chuff. Yeah. You know, you get a cone and a half each. Like. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember splitting a stick before school once with some guys. Yeah, in grade nine, I think it was. Early. And yeah, Early. like nice. before school, and before school, and it was fucking horrible because we had an yeah, Indonesian exam. I don't know it. what the fuck they're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tari <laughs> <laughs> I got an A. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> One of the very few A's I got in school was, wow. when I was baked off my face in Indonesia. Yeah. Far out. Yeah. I, I wouldn't got that lit. You learned another language. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I would in tongues. I don't yeah. think I would have been able to get lit and go to school. Yeah, just, it just way difficult. too, way too difficult. loud for me. Did a couple, yeah, yeah. Turn the noise down. <laughs> 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 me and Danny got um, blazed before school probably half a dozen times. Like That's right. Year, year twelve had um, were house captains, man. So we were like, you had to run a house assembly for like the ninety kids or whatever it was in your house. So you'd just drive drive the Corolla to school, just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Like seventeen years old, man, on the highway, like, just just blazing, man. And yeah. would rock up to school and like green and driving from gr- yeah, as well. Yeah, it was like twenty five minute drive, man. And um, had uh, greened a couple of fucking young kids out in the back of the car, <laughs> like on the way to school. Like took a uh, took one of our mates' little brothers, like was lived in the neighbourhood, so he he jumped in the car and he was like two years younger. We're like. You hit this shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, a bit apprehensive. Like, nah, like, your brother loves it and shit, man. You, you will too. Like, <laughs> hits it, man. Ultimate peer just pressure. Goes, just goes. Sideways. <laughs> didn't didn't hear much out of him. Me and Danny are in the front, <laughs> fucking chatting away, like, fucking singing, like, singing to the CD player and shit like that. Look back. And, like, there's another kid who's in the back who, who's not chuffing. He's like, I think Tyson's a bit, uh, a bit crook, boys. Like... <laughs> Look back and he's just like a l- <laughs> light coloured pool table. <laughs> 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 and uh, to take him into the school office and uh, like he's got his bit car sick actually. Yeah. yeah, something he just oh, yeah. Yeah, wound the window down to try and get him some air, but he's just like. So also, he, he stinks yeah. of weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. his eyes are lit to the yeah. gills. <laughs> 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 They're redder Mate. than the devil's dick. <laughs> just, <laughs> just sick, babe. Like, straight into sick, babe. But we'd do these. Um, We'd do these house assemblies just lit to the gills and there's a couple of times where we were like, <laughs> oh shit, like I think we need to... Um, Reel it in. Rain it in, like <laughs> go like to period one English and stuff. And be like, fellas, like, hey, like, uh, like just talking and laughing and stuff like that. <laughs> like, just high as a kite at that age, man, and like trying to hold it together oh, with and clearies you, in and You shit. can't hold it together yeah, at that age because no. you just don't have the foresight to know that you need to hold That's it together. It. Yeah, it exactly. would have been, I'm high and I'm going to act high. Yeah, mm. had it got done, it would have been bad news. Like, it'd be, yeah. you wouldn't, you'd get expelled for yeah. that shit for sure. Oh, and people did. Yeah. I remember at my high school, there were some people that, you know, got caught chuffing at high school and, and they were expelled for that. Definitely, you know? yeah. It's like, just... Any illegal things in a private school, it's like, mm. nah, yeah, you get, mate. If you break into the school at weekends or anything, you're gone. Like, exactly. Like it, it's not a, a desirable age to be, you know, to be doing those things. But, you know, obviously everyone also takes risks at that age. So, you know, mm. it doesn't necessarily define you if, if you've, you know, you've been busted for doing something because some people just genuinely make mistakes. But, yeah, I mean, it's obviously not someone on the right path if mm. they're, uh, you know, breaking, breaking laws, as you say, when they're... Uh, Mind you, we had... Guys coming to St. Pat's from Nudgee who were naughty at Nudgee and then they got sent to our school. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know what the deal was there. They were Britain, like we're Australia sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. Like, yeah we got the go. convicts. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, the, in uh, our grade at school, at one lunchtime, man, there was a house that backed onto the property that just had an unregistered car in the uh, in the back <laughs> backyard, like where the newsagent yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this bloke that ran the newsagent and stuff was a good bloke, man. He too. was. He was. They were nice people. Scotty was this dude's <laughs> name. He ran the newsagent. Real nice fella. And um, one lunchtime, man, about a dozen dudes in the grade, just like, fuck, this car's been sitting here forever. Like, let's rock it. And just, like, <laughs> dude, just, peppered, this ca- peppered this car with about 60 rocks in the back. Like, <laughs> in the back fucking oval, man. Just peppering rocks into the windshield. Like, yeah. <laughs> Teachers on the other side of the oval, like, wanders <laughs> over, like. Oh, what shit. The fuck? <laughs> What's going on? Hey, like, everyone sit down. Like, none of you are going. Fucking anywhere. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> we've got the principal. Like, but and the bunch of the dudes that um, were involved, 
had to come to the school on a Saturday. Like you did Saturday detentions where you're like <laughs> with, with the major bad. ones or yeah. you're like you were doing eight till twelve thirty. I only did like one of scrubbing those. desks and shit yeah. like that at, at the school. Like and all they did, man, was break into the film and T V room and they just made a DV, like made a video of themselves like jumping on the shade cloths and doing <laughs> yeah. like backflip and got in more shit. <laughs> <laughs> Figure that out. <laughs> oh. And that's probably it. Is you think about some of the things that you probably did do. I'm the world's biggest hypocrite. You know, mm. you absolutely have broken laws when you're in in high school and and those particular ages. Shit, I can remember in early high school, so it would have been like grade eight that um, a bunch of a bunch of buddies like at St Pat's pretty much emailed the teacher and like said all this sh- real like heavy stuff about <laughs> the teacher and then they all panicked because obviously they thought it through and thought oh we we might get traced back to this so then they somehow convinced me it was a good idea to send an email t- after that saying it was it was me like and just rip on him some more sort of thing so it steered it my way and um de- two detectives turned up at uh at our old gaff at Deckel road and um and Pulled me up in front of my parents and stuff <laughs> about like they had traced it back, you know, and that was in the early, early hotmail days. Wow. Yeah, early, early hotmail days. We were like death threats sort of thing, like. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, no, it was just like real, real offensive sort of, you know, physical like attacks on him. I couldn't even remember what we said, yeah. but it was just like you fat piece of shit or, oh. you know, oh, all yeah. that sort of stuff, just you know. Just real confidence building stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just destroyed him. <laughs> So glad we have Principal Anderson as a substitute today. Like <laughs> now we have the pleasure of staring at that hot tub of law. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Madison. <laughs> He's a fr- speaking mm. of freaks. I that dude on that. Uh, <laughs> He's a great character. That Principal Anderson on <laughs> Billy Madison. That he's in the wrestling and the, the real queer one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you like me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of anonymous notes to teachers, I do remember Stuart you in primary school. Um, there was oh, a serial offender, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you sending out a questionnaire of, oh no, I don't know what is one of those fold up things like those games where you you press you pick a piece of paper and then you pull something out and it's like do this or would you do that? And yours oh, was yeah. something to do with a, a particularly attractive grade one teacher. Oh, do you remember I think that? I can remember yeah. getting done for that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because uh, you, you know, all these twelve-year-olds talking about fucking their grade. <laughs> exactly, grade it, one it'd be like a whole bunch of questions, and and you pretty much put them in, and they were like, "Would you do this with this person?" You know, and then you had to, as you drew, drew them out, you had to answer the question. So, um, and sorry, yeah, to throw you on the like, bus, uh, and, and you <laughs> and you but you write it down. So, you know, so they had the piece of paper, yeah. you know, like, I mean, so they actually knew it was me because it was my handwriting and my piece of paper and it was like, would you, and and I think the, the emphasis of it was like swearing and obviously yeah. talking about doing sexual lewd acts like yeah. with the teacher, but would you would have you, sex you, with, yeah. you know, Would you prolapse this teacher? Mrs. Smith? <laughs> 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 At, at 12, like, fully aware? Like, oh, no. Would you ATM oh, this yeah. way? <laughs> Would you snowball something? Oh, oh, just a really, really loose advanced, shit. Advanced shit? Advanced, like, oh, man, like, advanced stuff. Because he perhaps discovered some sort of pornography <laughs> collection at your uh, house at all? Some, or, some, yeah. some prudish teachers might not even know what it was. <laughs> yeah. <you know>? yeah. <laughs> like, just think if we had the internet in the back di- then. In the dictionary? Like... <laughs> Prolapse? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> call, it, call his parents. <laughs> <laughs> call child services. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> call, yeah, call his family, call the government. <laughs> <laughs> and they do, man. They do. At that, that age, they do a lot of screening, you know. There's oh. a lot of, um, you know, teachers that look into what kids are drawing and all sorts mm. of stuff, you know. If you're just sitting there drawing, you know, people with their heads sawn off and, you know, yeah. holding up guns and stuff like that. Trust me, your teachers are making a phone call to somebody and they're like, you know, he draws this. Like, so he's obviously thinking about this it. This kid ain't right. Yeah. We made, um, talk about like people getting their head cut off and shit like that. I mean, we only saw a, uh, a failed suicide bombing <laughs> video like this week that was on mm. another level. Like, do you Joe think, Rogan was that real? Was it, yeah, Joe, was it real? Was that like yeah. fake news or real or? It looked real to me. Yeah. Definitely looked, looked real really to me. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looked but like the person was. Like, the segue yeah. was the segue was humming though. Yeah, was he on like, a segue? Was it, it must have been. The it segue looked survived. like it. Yeah, yeah that's it looked right. like yeah. it. Yeah, so the guy had some sort of like explosive device strapped to him, and he's like, <laughs> jumps on this segue, and it looks like he's just gunning it towards a crowd of people, and just falls mm. 
hits a rock on the road, there's a pebble on the road or whatever, he loses his balance, comes off and just falls over and, and it just explodes boom, and boom. T- takes no one with him bar, bar himself, yeah. essentially. And, and that's the what we were discussing is in terms of you don't feel remorse for that simply because the the person was on their way to take multiple people's yeah. lives. So, you know, you're just like, oh, shit. Well, if you were prepared to go do that in a group of people, then I'm glad that yeah, you right. got Suck cut. Y- yeah, that yeah. got cut off right there. Well, you innocent, know? innocent families, women and children mm. could have, were going to be victims of that guy's indiscretion. Like, he just took himself out. So that, that's, a, that's a victory. Oh, t- that's you a know win. what I mean? That's yeah, a win, yeah. for, win for mankind right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And now we all got a laugh out of it. So yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Now it's got 3,800 likes. Yeah, like, exactly. It's gone viral. It's gone viral. Yeah. Tell you what shits me with um, Instagram is uh, Danny made reference to it on another episode, but I've really picked up on it now. On every like sort of like celebrity that you follow, so all like Conor McGregor and shit like that, the people whose comments will appear are the people who have the most followers. Yeah. So yeah. I'm getting like these big booty bitches seeing all of their fucking comments on like McGregor's pages and shit. And I'm mm. like, I don't give a fuck what these yeah. people have to say. Like, I want to see what the fans are. Which I don't care be what like, Stacey the fitness model says about exact, this shit. Exactly right. Like some like plastic surgeried up LA bird with 8 million followers. Like, going to knock him out. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, buy fit tea. Re- yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. And like, <laughs> got their smoothie shaker in their hand, plugging... Fucking every which way. Exactly. And so if any sponsors want to hit us up, we'll do that yeah. shit. We'll, yeah. we'll sell our soul for a fucking sponsor. And that's why they would they would just comment on so much different stuff mm. is so that they can get those... They're you know. visible everywhere, mm. yeah. So on Conor McGregor's, man, I've got... If you ever look at Conor McGregor's photos, there's a... Um, Conor doing things is yeah. a fucking... I see his comment every time on every picture and yeah. I'm like... Them, him and Dylan Dennis, they're swinging from his ball sack on every photo as well, man. Yeah. Like all, Mate, all Dylan Dennis, <laughs> when's he going to do something? I know. What's the, like, he's, he ca- came out and talked a lot of shit. I actually li- listened to an interview with him on the MMA Hour and I'm like, shit, this dude actually sounds like a reasonable guy. Like he's ruffling a few feathers with his like appearance and stuff, mine included too, because he's there talking so much shit and he's zero and zero in MMA. Mm. It's like He's wearing Connor's hand-me-downs thinking that he's a rock star. Pre- mate, pre- yeah. pretty much. Very like, much. Yeah. Build, Very build much. your own legacy. Sure, he's an um, unbelievable <laughs> jiu-jitsu player and, but he started to talk a lot of shit and then he's taken a couple of L's in competitions and yeah. stuff. And then, Jake Shields beat him. That's right. And no, hasn't, really. hasn't, yeah, yeah, in a grappling match and um, hasn't fought in MMA at all and he's like, I'm Bellator's highest paid athlete. And I'm mm. like, <laughs> it's like, you're not, you're not yet, man. Like, yeah. He's really, yeah. really spruiking that Connor model before mm. even stepping into the cage. That's right. Yeah. Where McGregor sort of earned his right there to do that for mine anyway. Definitely. I mean, he came, he came out and he fought Brimage and then after that, you know, was sort of stoked about having a fancy suit that he could mm. put on and, you know, mm. like getting his first win. And that's when, you know, that legacy starts, you know, that that. But he hunger. was a cage warriors champ as well. He like, was. He had something to, I don't know. Justify. Yeah. Oh, he had two f- belts. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, oh, he was a champ, champ before that. That's right. But that, just that promotional value as well of, of putting those fights together. You just think about all the guys that really missed out on the same, the same because simply they weren't able to market themselves. Mm. You know, guys like if you had a John Jones character that didn't go through all that stuff and you know had that brash black guy attitude or whatever. They would have sold that Mike Tyson model, mm. you know. They would have had that popularity that Mike Tyson had in his era, where he was the biggest superstar in the world. Oh yeah, you know. It's like, <coughs> would his shit fly like these days? Imagine if John like grabbed the mic and said some Tyson shit on the. I'm a on fucking. T- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me. I'm a fuck you too. You love me, faggot. No, like, that, that shit wouldn't fly at all <laughs> no, these days. Yeah. You know, like yeah. that, that would that. not. That you're would not right. fly in this day and age. The internet would uh, would melt Crucify with that sort of him. shit. Crucify like, him, you're right. Um, I want your heart. I want to eat your children. Praise be to Allah. Like mm. Twitter just melt down. Yeah, like, good like, Holy point. Holy shit, fucking John just went off. Like, yeah, crazy point in yeah. boxing. You're right. You have to articulate yourself better. You can't have that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mike Tyson model yeah. of not having gone to school and just pretty much, mm. you know, he would have been zero education oh. at that point. Zero. Brownsville, New York. Wouldn't have been able to, you know, read or write, I'm sure. Oh, shit, I'd have to fact check that yeah, shit. But, yeah, you know. What you say about Iron yeah, Mike? Yeah, Iron Mike. <laughs> nothing, love you, Mike. Nothing, yeah, yeah. nothing but love. Yeah, shout out, Mike. But yeah, if John, John was able to somehow follow that model, mm. <clears throat> not get in all that shit, you know, have that badass attitude, 
you know, because even even the likes of Anthony Joshua that we were talking about before coming through in boxing, he could potentially have the the power to be a huge name in the, the world of combat mm. sports if he continues to knock a couple more people out mm. and, and sell himself. Mm. Because, you know, he's just got that look to him. He's the heavyweight champion of the world. You know, he's got ripped, he's black, he's 6'4", he's, you know, just marketable. He's a huge name and he loves hitting huge birds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. uh, he hits the BB double. He'd, yeah. he'd have the sword for it as well. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he would. He uh, AJ's not swinging like minimal heat. Like, yeah. He's, yeah, he's, 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 com- he's a big, big, big shower, I reckon. <laughs> uh, I, got a, I got a huge cock, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Bones. Uh, just ch- chewing, oh, Johnny Bones, just chewing blueies and. Mm. Going home and going to town on his miso. Yeah, or someone else entirely, allegedly. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I remember before the fight, he was he put on Twitter saying, if I win, I'm going to leave the country and just turn the fuck yeah. up. Yeah, so yeah that's right. You're waiting right. for him to leave the country and just torch himself. And he probably will, you mm. know, he probably like, will. That's the only safe place he can do it is not in America. Because mm. yeah. he, he even, he said a lot that he's, you know, he's just a savage. And I think it's somewhat of a a self-realisation that you just need to make those mistakes and then realise, well, if I'm going to party with my mates, I'll do it somewhere where we're in a safe location. No one knows where we're going. Mm -hmm. We'll just turn up there and, you know, bring some, bring some gear and, you know, like have have a good time. Sounds, sounds mighty fun. Mm, (laughs) Exactly. Especially if John Jones is there, you know, it's going to be fun. So that's, uh, that's exactly where we're headed right now, folks. We might uh, leave it there for the quick one hour of power. Bang on the note, almost, I'd say. Stick with us, Knock Off Nation. Talking to some uh, some cool characters over the next coming weeks too. Hang with us. Give us a shout-out. Shout-out Stone End Cold Press. We've been chatty on this fucking uh, potty because of the sponsor. Keeping us fueled as always. Rhett, man, thanks for your time, man. We'll definitely have to have you back. Oh, yeah. Chris, pleasure as always. Awesome. See you soon. <laughs>